There's no more fussing with several dials. You just turn this one dial and you're tuned in perfectly. Hi, this is Jim Gallagher, and here it is on TV Classics, episode number 100. We've gone a long way, and we've uh, brought a lot of great viewing into your living room. So tonight, we're going to celebrate. I even wore a tie. And for show number 100, we have a classic from the Sonny and Cher show. By 1971, Sonny and Cher had stopped producing hit singles as a duet act. Uh, Cher's first feature film, which was named Chastity, and we'll talk more about that name in a minute, was not a success. And the duo decided to sing and tell jokes in nightclubs across the country. CBS head of programming, Fred Silverman, saw them one evening and offered them their own show, The Sonny and Cher Comedy Hour. It was originally supposed to be a summer replacement series, but high ratings gave Silverman sufficient reason to bring it back later that year with a permanent spot on the schedule. The show was taped at CBS Television City in Hollywood. The show was a top 20 hit in the ratings for its entire run. Each episode would open with the show's theme song, which would segue into a few notes of The Beat Goes On. Every episode, Sonny would exchange banter with Cher, allowing Cher to put Sonny down in a comic manner. Comedy skits would follow, mixed in with musical numbers. At the end of each episode, Sonny and Cher would sing their hit, I Got You Babe, to the audience. Sometimes with daughter, her name, Chastity. No longer Chastity, but that was uh, Chastity Bono who was in tow. The show ran on CBS in the United States when it premiered in August 1971. It was canceled in May 1974 due to the couple's divorce. Though the duo would reunite in 76 and uh, identically formatted the Sonny Cher show, which ran until 1977. Tonight's show aired February 10th, 1973. Joe Namath and the Righteous Brothers joined Sonny and Cher uh, Joe shows off the field skills working with the Playboy Playmates as well as joining Sonny and Cher in the music finale showing the ways to a girl's heart. So here we are, episode number 100, and folks, the beat goes on. From Television City in Hollywood. like that anymore. <laughs> hey, you're Joe Namath. I don't want to be recognized here. I'm trying to hide, man. Women are chasing me everywhere. You're very, very lucky. I can help you out. Here, put these on. Oh, wow, you think it'll help? <laughs> oh, are you kidding? There, see for yourself. <laughs> it'll help. Boy, nobody's gonna recognize me now. Yeah, cause it's such a clever disguise? No, because I look like a tall, sunny Bono. It's the Sunny and Cher Comedy Hour with tonight's special guests, Joe Namath and the Righteous Brothers, with Ted Ziegler and Billy Van. Ladies and gentlemen, Sonny and Cher.
my lady. William Shakespeare is my name. -it. <laughs> Seeing you sitting, and I list this a lot. <laughs> Seeing you sitting on this hillock has brought forth the muse within my humble heart. And I have written a love verse just for thee. Ah, sweet smallness, tiny object of my desire. In this big, large world, your miniature presence has set my soul on fire. Come go with me. I think don't I speak it, go. don't speak it, little lady. Come with me. <laughs> Forget the lovers. Can you dribble it? Stopping. You're not going to believe this, but we've run out of gas. You're right. I'm not going to believe it. First of all, that's the oldest trick in the book. And second of all, other guys might run out of gas, but not you. Now, come on. Take me home, Abdul. Okay, you win. <laughs> home, Henry. Thank you very much, Pally. Hey, Pally. Oh, hey, you put with, it there. You with the hair? Yeah. Thank you very much. Anyway, that was a terrific hand. And why is it that every time that I sing, the audience just goes bonkers? I mean, they go bananas. They, really, they, they whip themselves into a frenzy. Why is that? Well, that's because they know the exit doors are locked. <laughs> now, that doesn't bother me tonight because well, tonight I have a great announcement. I, I am very proud to announce the opening of a new act. It's consisting of my talented relative. <laughs> it's consisting of my talented relatives, and uh, she wouldn't have coughed if she'd known how important this is going to be. It's a big announcement. The, the Bono family singers. <laughs> they sang, did you, Sheer? I didn't know they ever stopped eating. <laughs> it just so have because of my power in show business, I was able to open a few doors for him, you know, and so... If your mother's in the group, you better be able to open a few walls for him. <laughs> you want to know something, Sheer? For your information, the Bono Singers had a lot of offers. Yeah, to move back to Sicily. <laughs> I want to tell you something. When 50 Bono Singers are let loose, 
singing Italian folk songs. Well, well, there's just, there aren't any words to describe it. I could think of some. <laughs> no, and what's really going to grab the audience is that, that family feeling that we have, you know? It's just all family. And then it's really cute because they all kind of resemble me. You know? In that case, I think the women should shave. <laughs> We all wear tuxedos, you know, it's really... What do the men wear? <laughs> hey, mark my words, Cher. They are so talented that in one year, just one year, they're going to be singing for the president. Doesn't he have enough problems? <laughs> Here comes the biggie. This is the biggie. They have, they have an ending. The end of the act, my family, all 50 of them, dressed in green, white, and red, formed the Italian flag, and then my mom, dressed as Mother Italy, <laughs> dressed as Mother Italy, holding two lit sparklers, bounces off a trampoline, and lands in center stage. Now that's what I call a finale. That's what I call an earthquake. You know, anybody who's followed popular music in recent years knows the contribution made by a couple of friends of ours, the Righteous Brothers. Now, what most of you don't know is that when Sharon and I were just starting out, we used to sing background for the Righteous Brothers records. Yeah, but they were a big hit anyway. <laughs> right. But no one was sadder than we were a few years ago when the Righteous Brothers split up right at the peak of their career. So we're really happy to have them back together again. And we're especially honored tonight because they've chosen our show to make their very first television appearance of their new career. Ladies and gentlemen, Bill Medley and Bobby Hatfield, the Righteous Brothers. Oh, baby, my baby. 
Let's see what's happening at the Launderette. Look all you want to, Olivia, but I think your boyfriend escaped. <laughs> You know, I was just looking at these and think these are practically brand new and already they're wearing out. Oh, I know what you mean, honey. You can't get anything decent in men's shorts nowadays. <laughs> Runs around my house, all you can get is Harry. <laughs> uh, would you believe Joe Namath? Oh. Olivia, don't say Joe Namath to a desperate woman. <laughs> okay, but yeah, he just walked in the door. What? Where is he? <laughs> You ladies could give me a hand. Honey, if you play your cards right, I'll give you a standing ovation. <laughs> All I want to do is ask a question. Oh, yes. Whatever it is, honey, it's yes. Affirmative any time, your place or mine. <laughs> Can your show, No, that's right. What I, what I really need is a... a it's a... Hold it, honey. Wait a minute, Broadway. Now... I know, you, I know you've been around all the big places, right? You have, haven't you, sweetheart? But I want you to tell me something. Now, have you ever seen a high fashion outfit like this? No. On Park Avenue? No, but uh, I think I saw one kind of like it on Mercury Morris. <laughs> Who's, Who's Mercury, Mercury Morris? <laughs> He's crazy about me, Olivia. You'll have to hold him back. Hey, listen, really, I came in here for some help. I'm looking for a girl. 
Well, search no more, sweetheart. You have found the diamond. In the treasure chest of love, I'm it. Oh, Joe, you better watch that. Laverne's husband doesn't like it too much. Oh, oh. Well, I don't blame him. I don't like it too much myself. Oh. But uh, the girl I'm looking for happened to live in the uh, Happy Times Hotel for unwed stewardesses. Never heard of the place. Well, sure you have, Laverne. It's that place four blocks That's down that way. That's not metal in Joe's business. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, listen, thanks. I'd better go. Oh, Joe, honey. Honey, sweetheart, before you go, I mean, I have one question. I heard that you are quite a swinger, let us say. <laughs> now... You ever fool around with married women? Mm hmm do you? Oh, no. Never, never. <laughs> Believe me, with my knees the way they are, I just can't run fast enough. Oh. I'm just in love. Isn't he beautiful? Very Isn't gorgeous. Handsome? Very oh. much so. Oh, he's wasting his time with that unwed stewardess. <laughs> but did you notice the way he looked at me, Olivia? I thought he was looking at me. No, honey, he was looking at me. Yeah, he, he was, was definitely looking at me with shock and surprise and ecstasy on his face. He was. Really? <laughs> I know what he had planned, Olivia. I wasn't. I mean, I don't. I haven't had this body forever and not know what men are thinking. You know. <laughs> Again, it could be Broadway Joe and me in Whoopi City. <laughs> That's really a darn shame. I know, Olivia, but Joe's had bad breaks before. He'll get over me. I hope so. <laughs> yeah, I some bad news for you. Seems to be stuck. Hey, uh, hey, baby, the, uh, the sugar's stuck. Hey, it's not, not gonna work, baby. Uh, look, will you not call me baby? My husband is very jealous. Look, 
sir. I told you not to call me, baby. <laughs> I told you about my... Did I tell you or what? <laughs> She uh -huh. just made a mess of your whole suit. Right. <laughs> uh, you really serious? You want to know why I'm laughing? Yeah. <laughs> it's a gag, buddy. I'll tell you why I'm laughing. This whole thing is a setup. That's right. You see, little doll face here. This is, this is Dorothy Collins. And you see this guy? He's Alan Fun. You know what? I'm going to be on candid camera. <laughs> Wrong. Ah. I'm Nora Noodleman. <laughs> and I'm a jealous husband. And you're gonna be on the floor, Jack. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Well, this was one of our best, Dorothy. Yeah, but I think we went a little bit too far, Mr. Funt. <laughs> Listen, we ran out of gas about half a mile down the road, and we were wondering if they... There's gas station about 20 miles away. 20 miles? Hey, it's getting dark, too. Are there any hotels around? Yeah. No, but I'll let y'all spend the night here for $50. <laughs> $50? What? Hey, that's unbelievable. You're right. <clears throat> Make that 100 <laughs> You gotta be kidding. I wouldn't pay you $2. Suit yourself, youngin. Would have been kind of crowded anyway. Only two rooms. My partner and I share one. So you'd have been stuck in the other with my, with my daughter. Uh, well, I just happen to have my hundred right here and ready. There you are, friend. Another little treat for you. Well, thanks, fellas. Ella May? Oh, 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 oh. Show these fellas to your room there, daughter. Oh. I hate this sort of thing. <laughs> Thanks, partner. Mr. and Ms., the continuing story of a liberated woman and of the sniveling coward who liberated her. Mr. Jones, take a letter, please. Ready, Miss Farnsworth. Dear Fred, Bob, and Pear. Uh, pardon me, Miss Farnsworth, but you don't have to speak slowly for me. I take a hundred words a minute. <laughs> you Kelly boys are sure efficient. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Farnsworth. It's certainly nice to be appreciated. Usually, people just think of me as another pretty face. I'm sure you've had your troubles. Oh, you wouldn't believe some of the women I've worked for. 
My last boss was a lady. She was 60 years old, married with five children. And she kept wanting me to sit on her lap. That is disgusting. Well, I kept falling off. <laughs> well, I'll tell you something. It's strictly business here. Strictly business, Mr. Jones. Strictly business. Well, I'm glad to hear that. A man has to look out for himself. Hmm. For instance, I make it a rule never to have lunch with my boss. That's too bad, Mr. Jones. You know, I kind of plan to take us to a little French restaurant, beautiful atmosphere, terrific food. I thought maybe we might have lunch there today, just you and... Uh, oh, my goodness, you have <laughs> biceps. Yes. Well, uh, unless it's a beautiful French restaurant with great atmosphere and great food. <laughs> Hi, honey. I... I... Oh. Hi. 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 How are you? Oh, yes. Hi. I just stopped by to ask you a couple questions. What a surprise. Well, honey, I was downtown shopping, you know, and they had a lot of sales, and I ran out of cash. So yeah. I wanted to ask you if you had some cash, number one. And number two, I wanted to ask you, uh, uh, what happened to your old secretary, Mr. Prim? Uh, sweetheart, what happened to the $10 I gave you yesterday? I'll tell you that as soon as I find out what happened to your old secretary, Mr. Prim. Honey, Mr. Prim is sick. Now, this is Mr. Jones, and he's taking... Uh, do, I don't know why I'm... This is a place of business. Now, what is it that you want, sweetheart? Oh, you're right. I'm sorry. I'm acting like a, a schoolboy. I, I can look at you and see there's actually nothing to worry about. Very nice. I'm... Please forgive me. Nice-looking fellow. Are you married? No, I don't have a wife. Oh, well, that's funny, because, uh, you don't have a job either. <laughs> don't honey me. Don't honey me right now. I don't want to be honeyed until this bum is out of the office. Right now. Today. Just, this, this minute. Wait a minute. Just a minute. I don't, I don't have to stand here and be insulted like this. Oh, really? Oh, that's a nice outfit you have on. I suppose you got it with two pair of pants. <laughs> This abuse of a frustrated house husband. And you, you, you're rooster peck. I quit. Oh. Oh, honey, I. Hey, I. I suppose I embarrassed you. I can. Oh, honey, I am. I'm so ashamed! <laughs> That's just That's so sweetheart. Just That's so just sweetheart. <laughs> sweetheart, that's all right. Sweetheart, it's all right. Sweetheart, it's all right. Yeah. <laughs> Mistake. Heaven knows we've I've made mistakes too. Now just dry your little eyes. Dry your little eyes, sweetheart, and I pr I'll take you to a, a beautiful place for lunch. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, well, that's fantastic. Do you know any good restaurants? Of course I do. Now, what would you like? A Big Mac or an egg McMuffin? <laughs>
Oh, wow. Hey, Sonny, let's try the fortune lady. Ah, oh, Joe, no. You know, we're two well-known personalities. She'll, she'll see us right away, and then she'll know who we, She'll just look at us and know who we are. We're too well-known. She'll jip us. But I know we can fool her. I tell you what, I'll put the quarter in, and you stand in front of her. OK, try on. You are Joe Namath. You will have a great football season and break several passing records. <laughs> Okay, let me try it once and see right. what happens. Okay, here we go. Better than that. You're Joe Namath. You will have a great football season and you will break many passing records. And tell the guy who just put in the quarter that he is short, he cannot sing, and elevator shoes aren't going to help him a bit. <laughs> Thank you very much, folks, and that's the show. And we want to thank the Righteous Brothers for being here, and of course, we want to thank Joe Namath for being such a great guest. How about a handful? Yeah. Huh?
baby, 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 I got you girl. Let's sing with me, it's all right. Babe. I got you, babe. I got you, babe. They say our love will pay the rent for its own hour, but it's all been spent. You know my part? I guess that's so we don't have a part. But at least I'm sure of all the things that we got Babe I got you, babe I got you, babe Good night, everybody God bless you Also appearing in tonight's show were Ted Ziegler, Billy Van, Peter Cullen, Terry Garr, Freeman King, Murray Langston, and Sandy Rovetta. Portions of tonight's program were taped before a live audience. This is Peter Cullen speaking. This has been a very special night for us at Grafton Television. TV Classic Show number 100 is a milestone presentation that could not have been possible without the hard work of Bob DeTolmer and Chris McMullen. I thank them for all they continue to do, and I thank you for welcoming us into your living room. For all of us at TV Classics, this is Jim Gallagher. Good night. Mm -hmm.